This is the 12th Match Races of Christmas, where us, the Triple Clowns, present to you some dream matchups. We are constantly working on original and, I think, groundbreaking horse racing shows that are informative and also, at the end of the day, fun, guys. So hit that like, subscribe button, and that notification bell. Also, follow us on Twitter, at Clowns Triple, and all of their social media platforms, because we are going to bring you new shows. That's right, new shows that include... Horse racing conspiracies and odd stories. Handicapping 101. We're going to do live picks from the track. And of course, our show where we interview great guests and we do some horse racing skits that are a good time. Support us so we can keep going. Trailblazing in the horse racing industry from AJ Ryder, Sarah Marie, and of course, myself, G. Randall Johnson. Happy holidays. And let's get it on with the 12 match races of Christmas. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome. We are here once again, and this match is a little bit different, let's mm -hmm. just say. It's going to be a triple threat match between, uh, AJ, how, how should we put these guys? The almost, maybe, could have, pretty almost close guys. Triple, yeah. triple yeah. crown. What could have been. What could have been. The what could have been, which, yeah. which we feel like we've lived that life, AJ. Just I know misses. that's true. Where, you know, two out of three ain't bad. That's what I say. And that's this crowd. And that is going to be Smarty Jones, Funny Side, and War Emblem. Match race. Well, I guess it wouldn't be a match race, right? It'd be a three horse race. It'd be a three, three horse, horse race. race. Three horse It'd be a three horse race and a mile and a quarter on the dirt. I have to ask you guys right away, right now, what's the temperature at where we're on at? Because this could make a difference. Ooh. AJ, what's the temperature? 69. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> always mature AJ Ryder. Um, fantastic. Well, of it's course. 69. Wow, that was, I, I didn't even think I was leading him into that, but he, <laughs> That's, apparently I did. Have you Without met hesitation. AJ? Okay. All right. Let's get back to this. Okay. And I'd like to welcome who's going to be representing Smarty Jones in this battle, triple threat battle. And that is Tom from Tom and Tom Racing. We see him on uh, Razor Show at night. Pub What's Sports that on? Radio? Sports Radio. It's on uh, Pub Sports Radio. It's every Tuesday and Thursday. We do a couple pop-up shows every every once in a while on the weekends. But yeah, every Tuesday and Thursday, we, we cap out everything and we hit some winners. Absolutely. Yeah, they do a great job, guys. Check them out. Definitely. Definitely a friend of our show. He was on a little bit of one of our shows with Sarge that mm -hmm. we were doing. Um, we were doing picks and live stuff like that. But this is the first time he's been on one of our taped shows. So welcome, Tom. Thanks for Thank coming you. on, man. Thanks for having me. With my favorite horse ever. So I appreciate it. I know. Well, he did yeah. call it out when we were talking about it. He said, I will rep Smarty Jones any time. I said, well, funny you say that because we have something built up for you right here. <laughs> Smarty Jones, favorite racehorse of all time. So these are, this is our tale of the tape. And in the red corner, hailing from Chester County, Pennsylvania, with an incredible record of nine starts, eight wins, one second. His major wins include the Count Fleet Stakes, Southwest Stakes, Rebel Stakes, Arkansas Derby, Preakness Stakes, and of course the Kentucky Derby. He was your U.S. champion, three-year-old of the year in 2004. That is Smarty Jones. And in the blue corner, hailing from Georgetown, Kentucky, with an impressive record of 13 starts, 7 wins, 0 seconds, and 0 thirds. His major wins include the Illinois Derby, the Haskell Invitational Handicap, the Preakness Stakes, and of course the Kentucky Derby. This is your American Champion 3-year-old of the year in 2002, War Emblem. And in the green corner, hailing from Versailles, Kentucky, with an incredible record of 38 starts, 11 wins, 6 seconds, and 8 thirds. His major wins include the Bertram Bongard Stakes, Sleepy Hollow Stakes, Breeders' Cup Handicap, Jockey Gold Cup, Kings Point Handicap, Dominion Day Stakes, Wadsworth Memorial Handicap, a Preakness winner, and another Kentucky Derby winner. This was your three-year-old U.S. Champion Male of the Year in 2003. That is funny side 
All right. Well, our contest consists of three rounds. The first round, each contestant in our show will have an opportunity to present their opening argument. Each opening argument will be limited to one minute only. The second round is a Q&A with the judges. Each judges will get a opportunity to ask each contestant as many questions about each horse as they'd like. There is no time limit on this round. The final round consists of a free-for-all battle royale lasting one minute, 30 seconds, where each contestant goes back and forth presenting their argument, and, well, we'll just see what happens then. So, And at, and at the end of the three rounds, the remaining two judges will then confer and decide our winner. So that's it. And this is the moment of the truth all the time, Tom. Now, what the deal is with this one, obviously, you get to pick two clowns and they'll decide on what horse they're going to choose. But you get to choose the two clowns to go against and the one will be the judge. Well, this is tough. I've got to go. I've got to pick Randy and AJ. All Woo-hoo. right. All right. We leave. Coming. I want funny side. Good, because I want War Emblem. Good. <laughs> you thought I had, you right. thought I had funny side, didn't you? I thought for sure you were going to go funny side. Nope, 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 nope. I'm going to War Emblem. Okay. All right, so now you get to choose, Tom. We give everybody this choice. Would you like to go first, second, or third in your opening argument? Uh, you know what? I'll, as the guest, I will, um, I'll, watch, I'll watch both of you guys, and then I'll, I'll state my opening statement. Smart wow. move. How noble Smart of you. Smart move. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Uh, uh, nice. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah, I can listen to the, the nonsense we spew out so you can just criticize it. I get it. It's he's, just, he's just preparing AJ, a mic, mic drop on both of you. AJ, what do you want? You or me? What do you want? Uh, well, you, you already prepared for this horse. I have to now gather my notes and and transfer them so to you're aj unprepared thing. so that's good he won't be paying attention during my argument <laughs> oh boy exactly. all right well all right. so i'm gonna let's go- get ready we're gonna start round one each of you will have a minute for your opening our, our arguments and randy will be starting with you okay. now all right war emblem let's talk about this horse obviously he was uh, uh seven for 13 in his lifetime that's fine we have a better story. I know everybody's going to talk about funny side and everything like that, but War Emblem, let's talk about 21 to 1 at the Derby. Wasn't a favorite like these other guys. Won the Illinois Derby. And the Sheik who bought that horse two weeks before the Derby, he knew something. He won the Illinois Derby. They say he was the fastest they've ever seen at a track besides AJ Ryder in his state finals, by the way, in Illinois. <laughs> and he got a million dollar bonus for that. He bought the horse. He had faith in him. We're talking, I know he has one dimension, lone speed, but there's nobody going to the turn with him. And you can't catch him. I know he's one, he's one dimensional. That's fine. He only lost the Belmont because he fell on his knees at the start and still made a mid move because he hates to be behind horses but he has one dimension he couldn't do it if he doesn't go to lead has to go to the lead he had medagladoro perfect drift harlan's holiday better horses he went against and he looked like a better horse at that time and time wow that was the first time he had a perfectly timed argument here so you say, all, over. all right all right aj you ready mm-hmm. all right let's hear it okay so this is a mile and a quarter. This is about speed. And these three, two for three horses, clearly the best one here is funny side. Equa base wise, 120, three times throughout his career, 120 or higher, height of 22. Neither of these horses can touch that. The Preakness, I believe 122, had the, I believe the fastest of the three Kentucky Derbies. Smarty Jones, again, a little bit fast because it was a little bit sloppy. But as far as going talking about, you know, one-on-one, with Randy's horse, I'm going to try to take him out. Uh, the horse he lost to, I know he went to his knees, but he still lost. The horse he, he lost to in that Belmont, funny side actually came back and beat when he was four. Not to mention, this horse actually ran till he was four. Proved even more so than all of these other horses. Do I have more time? I don't, I don't know. I no. felt like it was going oh, long. Oh, God, you had 10 seconds left. Oh, did I? Can I go Equib- on his? Equibase, nope. better than everyone. <laughs> All right. You cannot go on his. You got to hold that off for round three. AJ Ryder, short of words. That was on. Oh. I mean, what's That's, going on? They I told you. Like, I, I, my notes are an absolute mess because I, was, I had to prepare for the other one, too. So it's, everything's kind of all over okay. the place. All right. Well, good. Yeah, all right. He, had a, he had a good, Sorry. strong argument here. All right. Tom, are you ready? All right, Tom. And start. Uh, yeah. For, uh, Smarty Jones. He is America's horse. He is Philadelphia's horse. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nine starts. Nine starts, eight firsts, one second. $7 million in earnings in one year. 
all in one year. 2004 Eclipse winner. He won the Kentucky Derby out of the 15 hole. Out of the 15 hole. Out of the auxiliary gate. He won. I don't know if you guys know what he did in the Preakness, but he won it by 11 and three quarters, 11 and a half legs. Still a record that stands to this day. Every race that he won except for his first race, he wore stakes races. And, and, he, and he won them all except for the last race. He won the Arkansas Derby, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness. He won the Pennsylvania Nursery Stakes by 15th lengths in just his, in just his second race. He is the people's horse. Right, With the yeah, Rocky he... theme in the background. Yes, right. we heard that. That's very nice. Very oh, nice. Sir. That uh, was fantastic. Uh, I, I feel like just for the music. Right. Of... Okay, good job. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, all right. All right, let's move on to round two. This will be a Q&A where I get to question all of you guys. Um, let's go, I'm going to start off with AJ's question here, and all three of you will have a chance to answer this. Uh, Pace scenario, how do you think this race is going to be run? AJ, we'll start with you. Well, I, th I think g going by Pace, War Emblem obviously is going to want the lead, and here's, here's the – you know, the catch here is he's got two absolute monsters that are going to be right, right on his hip, or if not very, not far behind at all. So the fact that you can think that War Emblem is going to be able to not only come down the stretch and fight off Smarty Jones and Funny Side, I mean, you're nuts. Well, I think you're right. Not, not, well, number one, that I'm nuts. I'll agree with that. But I'm not nuts because of this, okay? There's other reasons that make me nuts. But he, you're right. War Emblem is going to go to the lead. But War Emblem has wore down just as good of horses before. No one passes War Emblem. It doesn't happen. It's never happened before. Why would it happen before? And let's just talk about has Smarty Jones ever passed a horse? And when Funny Side did it, Mike Smith basically gave him a gateway to whatever. He didn't pass a horse. He didn't even see the horse. He went so wide around the last turn. So, I mean, you're talking about these horses running by horses? No, I think, he goes, I think, it's, I think it finishes how it goes around the turn. Because I think that's how these horses are. So that's my pace. Yeah. I don't think I, I, I don't think this nobody anybody's going to wire this this race. And I think I agree with both Randy and AJ. I think War Emblem's going to going to get out front. But I think the same thing's going to happen that we saw in the Derby. I think Stuart Elliott is going to find that rail, and I think he he's going to bypass everybody in the in the last in the in the last few legs. And, and I think it's I clearly see Smarty Jones. I think War Emblem is going to run out of steam. Uh, I think Funny Side, it's going to be a Smarty Jones, Funny Side, War Emblem in that, in that order. Can I ask you, is this um, Smarty Jones on the sauce or off the sauce? Jason Whoa. Service. John Service. John Service. <laughs> uh, John Service, who's still trained to this oh, day. He's training. Yes, no, wrong service. That's okay. Well, then let's ask about War Emblem. That's okay. Not to mention like War Emblem. War Emblem. Anything over a one for four, anything at a mile and a quarter or above. Like this, he don't have the distance. He got one time, one time. Other than that, he was finishing fifth and sixth and seventh, tenth. No, I mean if you want, and if you want to talk about Juice, let's talk about Juice. Let's talk about War Emblem. Who was his trainer? Wow, let's let's hold uh, let's hold that thought. Let's wow, hold we're going that to the Bob That was later Damn. on. Let's hold that Damn. thought for <laughs> round three. You brought that upon yourself. Let's hold on to that. I know um, I had I was gonna have that in my hip pocket, but uh, I know I keep know. that in I your know hip, you keep that in your hip pocket for round three. But um I do have a couple more questions. Um I do want to ask about time. Oh, here the whole time. Now oh, I know uh AJ, you brought up funny side time of being um, I, I think he said one of the fastest uh, in the Kentucky Derby. I'm just talking Kentucky Derby. Do you think – now, I know Smarty Jones was 204, War Emblem was 201.13, and Funny Side was 201.19. Very, very close between those yeah. two. But, obviously, conditions come into play and whatnot. What do you think the times are going to be this time around? Do you think they can pull off a closer – I mean, their margin of victory is pretty good for all three of these horses, for what they came out to be. Do you think that the times are going to be a little bit faster, the three of them, because they're kind of going to be pressing each other? Well, I think time-wise, it's going to depend on what type of pace 
that war emblems are going to set. And I think if he comes out high, I just don't think there's that distance there. But, I mean, I would imagine we'd see a similar 10 or 201, 202 for funny side when he wins. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, once again, times get thrown out the window. I'm sorry, go to any track in the country and look at the record times from horses, and you won't even know their names, like 90% of them. Never heard of the horse. So, Agreed. you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, look at She Dares the Devil has the acorn record, right? Let's say She Dares the Devil is better than uh, what, Ruffian? Come on, that's okay. just silly. Um, but like, seriously, I mean, it, it, you're going to see every track in the world is going to have some track record holder that's terrible. Um, not terrible, but somebody you don't know. Besides what, what Secretariat did and everything like that. Monarchos used to be tied with Secretariat. Now they've moved the clock a little bit. The Secretariat has them by a little bit. Would anybody say Monarchos is going to Secretariat? No. So I think the time's going to be, I think all three of these horses ran the, run their race. I don't think it's going to be like the time's going to be better because they got bumped around or something like that. They all ran their race. So they'll probably run the same time that they ran before. And they'll all be at the wire near each other. And, that, and that's the, you look at the Preakness times and the Preakness, the weather of the Preakness for all three races, I, I watched them this morning, were picture perfect Maryland days. And Smarty Jones had the best, uh, had the best time of the Preakness, a fraction of a second or two, uh, if that. But, uh, and then as AJ alluded to earlier, uh, Smarty had the mud at, at, the, uh, at the Derby, finished 204 next to Funny Sides, uh, 201.19 and War Emblems 201.13. Uh, but I, I think picture perfect day, uh, in in may I, I i see exactly what i was saying earlier with uh the smarty jones funny side and and war emblem in that in that same order which i have to say 201 13 when you're saying he doesn't have that distance that's crazy we're at 201 13. it's got one distance. time it hit it one time hit it one time you want to talk about numbers like obviously you don't want to talk about time just talk okay, about hold on, numbers hold on, hold time on. form numbers that's across the board oh, funny side my last question, I think we need to go into the Battle Royale, but I do want to bring up um, competition. Now, uh, Randy did bring up um, War Emblem's competition as uh, Medagli Doro. AJ brought up some horses. Um, Smarty Jones, what, do you think that he's got up some horses? I mean, you, you look I at Funny it? Side, Empire Maker, and Peace Rules, uh, Medagli Doro for War Emblem. Smarty Jones, what do you think? Smarty beat Tappet. He beat Birdstone. Uh, Lost kind of Birdstone. Birdstone. Uh, Birdstone. Stuff on the record. Birdstone. Uh, Lionheart. Uh, he beat Lionheart twice with Mike Smith. He also beat Rock Hard Ten with your friend and mine, Gary Stevens, in the Preakness. Uh, Jerry Bailey on Eddington in the Preakness. Uh, he, at the Rebel Stakes with Johnny he beat Purge with Johnny V. I mean, these are these are not Hall of Fame horses. They are they are top tier horses. Uh, they he Purge. Uh, with Prado in the Arkansas Derby. Uh, that, that's where the competition, uh, I'm going to say a little bit, a little bit more even. I don't, I don't see a clear cut winner. It, a clean, it was all very similar because they raced three years, you know, the, the Derby three years apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Similar, it was similar horses that they beat, I think. I'll, I'll, agree with, I'll, I'll agree with what he's saying with competition wise. I think funny side of the competition wise has the least. Um, the least? Of the competition side. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, the least. Yeah, it's funny side. I think at least of those two. Uh, yes, of of the Smarty Jones and and I think the least. I mean, I think barely. Well, the maker was no slouch. No, but it yeah. was like his only one, really. I mean, Birdstone. You can say, eh, you know. I mean, that was Birdstone too, right? Yeah. Well, and and I don't even think Funny Side wins the Derby if if uh, if Sky Mesa in, was was not scratched. I mean, ifs and whats, but uh, that's just. You know, you guys you know. been drinking today, huh? All right. AJ, <laughs> you guys hitting the sauce a little early this morning? Yeah, yeah. You tell us. You tell us about it. AJ, what's your rebuttal here? Well, the reason, I mean, if one or two of these races go a different way, obviously the Belmont's a big one, or, you know, the Haskell, you put a Haskell win and the, um, in the wood in Funny Side's name, all of a sudden, this, the, the level that he is, a, is head and shoulders above these two. I, I think. Well, let, let me ask you this. Where, when I look at Megan Mega Leora, Peace Rules, Empire Maker, um, like you said, Sky Mesa, I think the competition during this point in time, not to mention he ran against like Ghost Sapper. Like I think the competition he was running against at that time was crazy. At the time later on in his peak, though. 
We're talking about their peaks. I'm just, yeah, even well, the three is the three-year-old. His three-year-old crop. Uh, that's what I'm Hold on, about. let him let him finish, and then I think. Well, we are talking about okay. So we are talking about, okay, so are talking about peak. We are talking about peak. So up. we want to talk about peak. We don't have to talk about the Derby years. I'm, I, I have You're a four-year-old right. horse now against your three to your two three-year-olds. Yeah, that's. If you right. want to talk about peak? That's not to right. Mi- like. All right, all right. Okay. Hold hold that hold that thought. Tom, do you have any last remarks in for our Q and A round before I move on to the battle royale? Let's 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 get to it. All yeah. right, let's move on. Round three. You guys have a minute. I'll, I'll give us a little bit longer. I'll, I'll go two minutes since we're talking three horses. This is the Battle Royale where you guys just get to battle it out. And your time begins now. Okay, I'm going to start real play quick. music I'm, for this I'm one, going, too? I'm going, I'm, going, I'm going after AJ real quick on this yeah. one because I know I understand that Barkley Tag, this is his second greatest horse of all time. We all know this. Behind tis the law. Right, AJ? Uh, <laughs> that's a matter of opinion, which is an opinion I don't share. I'm just, out, that's, that, I'm just kidding, obviously. But I just knew that would get to him. But Barkley Tag, I feel like, made up excuses for this horse. And I'm going to tell you that. Like, what, what he, he couldn't come out here and win because he didn't like the heat. That's what he said. I, he didn't like the heat. We're talking about that. You know who's going to put heat on him? War Emblem. Guess what? It doesn't matter how <laughs> it's, it's, hot, it's 69 degrees out in this race. So it doesn't matter what the heat is. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. But I mean, you're talking about a horse that had excuses. And the only reason he ran when he was four, still really, and kept running because he was gelded. I mean, that's fine. But do you really think he was better when he was four? Do you? It doesn't really no. look like no, where did uh, Where did he finish in the, in the classic? Ninth, ninth, eighth? seventh, and yeah, ninth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's but where did, we, you know, where did your war emblem? He didn't go four, four times. Four yeah. times this horse. Four times this horse. This is this is horse has run a uh, an above one twenty one twenty one time form figure. Oh, he had Neither trouble of your horses listen. can even come close to that. I'm telling you right now, War Emblem in a, in a classic. If I look, if I look, if I look, Tony Jones lead, running an average of like one hundred five, and I see a horse who, who's done one twenty plus t- uh, four times, who are you taking in that race? You know, let me, let, 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 me never give, let Tom, let Tom, let me give, let, let me just uh, defend, defend my guy. All of his wins come at diff- came at different distances. That's, that's unprecedented. Uh, he also put asses in the seats. So we, 120,000 people watched. Hey, we don't care about the gate for this match race. Hey, the, you know, we ain't he, making he was, no money off of it. The he, Jets he was, sell out home games, Tom. The Jets sell out home games. Yeah, they sell them out, but people show up. <laughs> he's similar to a horse. He's, he's also he's similar to a, a authentic, I think, with a short racing career. Oh, don't yeah. bash authentic like that. Come on. Ow. With a short racing career in, in retirement, he, he saved – he alone saved Philadelphia Park Racing. They were thinking about closing it until Smarty Jones' popularity in the Philadelphia area brought, brought the casinos into Philadelphia. Now we have racing still at Philadelphia Park because of, because of Smarty Jones. All right. Well, that, I mean, right. listen, I said he was a better story. And I feel like I have to say, and I got to say this out loud, that I, I, and here are the triple clowns. We don't believe in being prejudiced, racist, and we only discriminate against one creed, and it's the one who likes to the law. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> just, because, just because War Emblem happened to be a homosexual horse doesn't mean you guys don't have to hate on it. All right. And that is time. We are going to end it on that note. You oh, wow. Can I explain why he's a homosexual horse? Does, do you guys know uh, this? You have to explain it now. Okay. No. He actually wouldn't breed. He didn't take to mares at all. You can't say at all. He some did. people have. Some people have. But, no, they brought mares over and he just wouldn't. And he was fertile and he just didn't like mares. He just didn't. So. So? I feel like you guys are bigots and you're going against the- uh, I, I, No. I never even brought that like, argument up. You're the one who like brought you, that up. I you know, view all horses, no matter what their sexual preferences, as it equals. Your horse is a chic owned horse. I, and, and Bob Baffert, I've got little Smarty Jones owned by an 80 year old man. He, he is. Blue he collar. 80, he he is, 100, well, yeah, he might be 90 now. He's dead now, Pat Chapman. <laughs> But oh, the uh, yeah, we're, owner. Not, I we're, not, oh, we're not owned by sheiks. We're, we're just regular working people, just like Smarty Jones. You, well, we're Americans. <laughs> oh, wow. He's the people's Listen, horse. Like Damn. I said, the, 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 uh, Smarty Jones, the Smarty Jones argument with him being the people's one, and we always get hit in the face with this one. But like I said, at the end of the day, you know, Rudy Rudiger didn't go on to go to the NFL. You know, I mean, but we, well, they all chanted Rudy. Uh, I think 
funny side, I just think but at the end of the day, guys, I think that if, if war, I think whoever goes to turn wins this race. I just never saw this horse get run down. I think this horse wasn't a great racehorse in a sense of one dimensional, more than your guys. No, no, oh Lord. <laughs> Anyways, let's, let's jump into the deliberation. Like I said, I'll just be kind of spouting off things that you guys said, and I'll be deliberating with our audience. You guys can obviously let me know in the comments. Out of the three of these horses, who do you think is going to win this race? Um, I, I want to say this is kind of tough for me because I have to put uh, my research aside because I kind of came into this thinking a certain certain way um, and I really was kind of taken aback you know I think a really strong point I mean AJ obviously brought up times and that's why I kind of questioned it I know you're I know you're a numbers guy um, and yes War Emblem and Funny Side tie, tied in equibase numbers for their derby run uh, where Smarty Jones came in only at 111, which is like not much difference. Um, while while Warren Blim and Funny Side were 115, um, you had some really uh, good facts about War Emblem and his competition, and that is kind of why I asked that because War Emblem I thought might have had the tougher competition in his career or in his I, I would say like the three-year-old prime. Um, versus these other two, which is a little bit hard to say because Empire Maker was a very good horse um, that Funny Side had to battle against. But Tom had a lot of really, really strong selling points for me on Smarty jo Jones. And I guess, to be honest, I was kind of looking for someone to sell me off of Smarty Jones. And you really just sold me more and more on Smarty Jones. And to me, I think it's hard to pick between funny side and smarty jones um but i'm going to sway more towards smarty jones here with my deliberations so can funny just, side uh, funny side got second then at least right can i just add that I think, <laughs> can i just add how overrated? i still play i still i still finished place right can i can i add how you all hit the board can i add how overrated empire maker is he just makes good babies because he won four raises in his career empire maker i feel like we hear that name and we're like Oh, wow. You know what? That's a good point. That actually is a really good point. The tap it. Who you said you beat Tap it. That was a good one. Tap Empire it. Maker was a Tap it's a good one. To beat. Oh, I just see these three horses. When if you really press them, just say along the, the, uh, the turn, I really see Smarty Jones possibly tiring these two. Oh, I think you're going to the lead. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I, no, not going to lead, but I see, I, I see these. These horses are just going to tire each other out, and I see Smarty Jones coming out on on top. This was tough. I mean, I'm not going to lie. This was really tough for me. It's a really good race. Decide. I think you're crazy that you think Boreham will be out of it because I don't think that horse is ever out of it. Like, I think, he was, I think he's out of it halfway through the race. You're nuts. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> Bam. But I had that him coming in third. I had, I had him coming in third. Yeah. Yeah. So clearly you played the exact uh, funny side, Smarty Jones – I did yeah, Smarty. You, I did yeah, Smarty you, you toss all. War Emblem here. Smarty Jones <laughs> all. Smarty Jones all. I bet you can hit the. I bet you hit the try. Um, you just, just box the three horses. You hit the try. Yeah, yeah. You at least hit the try <laughs> right. with this one. Uh, but yes, that is. Uh, we'll go with that. That's my decision. Smarty Jones is winning this race. The did the, Doral, did the music help? Uh, it was the music that did it, right? That well, yeah, 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 yeah. That was that. I don't know if that was legal. I'm not sure no. that that's like using. Oh, uh, really? But, okay. Yeah. No. Well, no, we didn't say it in the rules. So I did. Fine. That <laughs> that's I mean, true. I kind of went into this being like, you know, I really don't know. And then you started playing Rocky, and I was like, that was it. You could like be trying to convince me on <laughs> another horse that I haven't even like know nothing about. Yeah, no, uh, I think, I mean, I don't know. Really really I mean, that, that's, you, 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 you listen, could that's tell a, me a quarter that's a, horse trying to win this. That's a <laughs> hell of a quarter. Like, yep, nope, Rocky Music done. This at, horse could win anything. At the end of the day, it really would be a hell of a race in a sense of you, would do, be. you do have a horse in War Emblem that it is true. When War Emblem went to the lead, he was tough to pass. He had a gear that he yeah. didn't like. And they said he was the kind of horse that was like that horse couldn't ever be behind a horse when walking around. Was like an angry just had to be and even when he made that huge move after he fell and then got bumped 
That was very and impressive like, in the Belmont. He made he, that he rocket move. Like, he's still. But you can't do that. Like Bob Baffert said, it was like the worst two and a half minutes because he was like, "Oh, he's done." You know, like right. I mean, but he still had to work. He still his hit hardest. the board after that. No, he didn't. I thought he did. No. Oh. That was way off. And I got like oh. tenth. Yeah. He, oh, I don't know why I was thinking. I mean, this mid move was ridiculous. His second quarter was probably like a record yeah. time. He he was like a rocket. But but it, it'd be weird to see a horse break clean like that have a horse in Smarty Jones that almost kind of needs the lead in a sense, but it's not going to get it and, you know, be clear. And then you have funny side who I honestly, I think, I think funny side would come in third in that. I really do. I think it would be if Smarty Jones can pass or emblem. I don't think they're both passing him honestly, but I, I think it'd be a great race because of that. You have three horses with almost the same three styles. Yeah, they're exactly yeah you know, very um, similar styles yeah that's similar. why i gotta go with like if they all have early speed lone speed style i gotta go with the one with the most that's all i'm saying yeah you know um yep yep and i well, just clearly no one else agreed with you so uh, I know. <laughs> well that's what happens here that's all right. hey, I, not, I, I didn't see any second or third place here we're putting these on later know. good lord i'm not one to to blame jockeys but i know Stu elliott got a lot of crap for uh for losing the belmont with smarty jones and i don't think it was his fault for the record. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Not, 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 not a blame the jockey guy, but uh, that was. Birdstone was really good for like two races. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I shouldn't have put him in my argument. <laughs> Did you see me when I said I was like Birdstone? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I was just rattling off stuff. All right. So that was it. Sarah going with. Smarty Jones. Smarty Jones. So, so did you start with Smarty Jones? Did you know you were going to take Smarty Jones in the beginning? Not no. Um, no, I was kind of leading more towards funny side after doing so my research. So Alex blew the argument is what you're yeah. saying. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Okay. Tom, right it's right awesome right to have you on Thank our show again. Thank you for again. having me. Thank you. And why don't you tell everybody where they can check you out on your Tuesday and Thursday nights. And yeah, you yeah your Twitter. absolutely. Uh, you can follow me on Tom and Tom Racing one on Twitter. I put some pics out there. Sometimes they win. Sometimes they don't. Uh, but uh, I don't. I know I'm pretty pretty good at the Mid Atlantic tracks, especially Parks and Delaware. Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, and Laurel. Every Tuesday and Thursday, you can watch me on Pub Sports Radio, where I break down handicap races with razor sharp picks and a few other fellas, and we just have a couple beers, have a good time, goof around, and more times than not, we win some money. So please, if anybody wants to hop on, I know the clowns will make some guest appearances. They'll pop in chat. They'll pop on live, uh, and uh, it's it's fun. So Tuesday, Thursdays, Pub Sports Radio, and thanks for having me on. Absolutely, no, absolutely, Tom. Yes. Thank you for coming on, and um, yeah, and that, that's awesome. So yeah, yeah follow Tom. He, he's 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 live on Twitter a lot. I do see that. He doesn't sleep like me. I noticed that because I'll wake up <laughs> in the middle of the night and he's. He's up doing uh, his Twitter thing. I do see that sometimes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, then definitely check out Pub Sports Radio Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, it's night a lot of fun. On YouTube. Lot of it fun. is a lot of fun, and yeah. we do like like to pop in every now and then to to say hi to to the guys. So, but yes, um, Tom, happy holidays to you and your family, and thank you so much for jumping on. And Likewise, doing this tough. Yes, tough thanks. Race. Happy, happy holidays. Enjoy happy holidays. Happy holidays to everybody. All right, thank you. Even AJ. <laughs> Triple Clowns is a production of the team at Big Umbrella. Rate and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts. Send us your questions at tripleclowns at gmail.com and you may be featured on a future episode. Follow us on social media at Clowns Triple on Twitter and Instagram and follow me, AJ Ryder, at Troy McLean WWE on Twitter. Like and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. All right, guys, for AJ Ryder, I'm out of here. See you later, everybody.